All right, well, how's everybody doing? Welcome. We are going to do a short Q&A here with Pastor Justin and Pastor Tom. Um, my name is Tyler, and we are going to talk about Pastor Justin and Tom's recent trip to India. They just did a missions trip um, a couple of weeks ago. They were there for how long? For 12 days? Longer. Yeah, oh, so no, it's about 12 days. About 12 yeah. days, yeah. so not a short weekend away in India by any means. Um, so I'm just curious, can you give us an idea of what the background is here? How did we make this connection with the folks over in India? So uh, first of all, uh, I just want to be clear, like even as we're talking about it, like there may be some times where um, I like maybe we're a little evasive of like names or church names or things like that. Um, and that's strategic just because of the scenario of uh, persecution that um, many of the churches are facing in India. So um, anyway, just want to make sure that you guys... Yeah, that's fair. Keep everybody safe. Yeah, so we've we've been in relationship with um, a church and, um, and, um, and a family in, uh, in India for over 30 years as a church. Wow. And um, I brought my family back there in 2017 on a trip with some teenagers back when I was a I was a um, youth pastor. So my family, uh, my Molly Carter, my wife, we all went there. And uh, so we've been in relationship for, for, for many, many, many years. And so about in May or June of this year, I got a, like a phone call from um, our partner in India. And he said, hey, I'm, I'm bringing my family in. Um, do you think that you know, maybe we could, we could meet up for lunch. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, you're coming from India. We're just going to do lunch. And he's, right. he says, yeah, in fact, um, I'm bringing uh, another uh, pastor couple from Mumbai and another couple from the UK. Uh, they're going to come in and um, just like to, to meet up for lunch. And I'm like, for, for, like, you're literally traveling across the entire world. To, to meet up for lunch. And they said, yeah, we, we can't meet for long. We're coming in, then we gotta go. Can your wife make it? I'm like, well, she's a teacher. Maybe she can get off for like lunch to come out to, to meet you guys. But I'm thinking like, what is this all about? Why, like, what what is the reason for this uh, for this visit? And he's like, well, it's just really relationship building and just, you know, I'd like you to get just to meet them. They'd like to get to meet you. They're part of like a church planning network uh, <clears throat> out of the UK, but they're they're blowing up in in India. There's like 400 churches over the past few years that have been <clears throat> um, planted. And so, okay, great. So we meet up for lunch. We're eating Panera over here in the in the church, uh, like little conference room. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation where like you're eating lunch, you're hanging out, you're talking, and then all of a sudden things shift in the spirit, and and and. And one of the guys literally just starts prophesying over my wife. He has a word for her. And um, it was powerful. It hit her, like, just right right in the heart. And then the second guy, Vinu, um, he, he just, uh, he looks at me and he says, he had a prophetic word for me. And he said, I see you in front of a huge canvas. And he said, all of these, like, colors are in front of you and I he goes and I heard I heard the Lord say to you son just start painting mm. make a mess of it and I'll make an art mm. of it and I was like as soon as he said it I knew exactly what he was talking about like you know anybody else could hear that and be like yeah what does that mean for me it was like I knew that he was talking about the Hope Center that yeah. I've been dreaming about um, in downtown Biddeford and so that next Sunday uh, it was like an activation word. It was more than a prophetic word. It was a like a catalytic word that like awoke something in me. And so that next Sunday, I talked about the Hope Center in uh, in downtown Biddeford. And uh, over the course of that next week, upwards of like three hundred thousand dollars was donated to go towards that. And so we're literally continually working towards that. But he invited me that that lunch. He said, "Hey, do you ever travel? Would I'd love for you to come to India." I was like, "Well, I." Don't normally, but you've just changed my life. I think we I should probably <laughs> like get to know you a little bit more. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we he invited us to come on out. So I was like, hey, Tom, what are you doing um, in, in Thanksgiving November? break? In Thanksgiving break. break. You're probably not doing anything over Thanksgiving. And he was like, what are you, what are you talking about? I was like, you want to go to India? Yeah. 
And he asked. And I said, sure. Yeah. You know, we, you know, worked it all out. And uh, yeah. And I think, and interestingly enough, when you had that meeting for lunch, and you even talked to me and you're like, I don't know why we're meeting for lunch. Right. Uh, that was my response going to India. I'm like, I don't really know why <laughs> I'm going to India. Yeah. But I'm just going to say yes and go yeah. for it. Yes. Yeah. Man, it was awesome. Are yeah. you guys good travelers? Uh, <laughs> I don't enjoy traveling. Yeah. Like, it's like I'm not like a. I'm not like a guy who's like, ah, oh, get me on a plane, take right. me anywhere. Yeah. Well, it's not like going to Florida. I mean, sure. one leg of the trip was 14 hours. Goodness gracious. Well, that's pretty From brutal. Boston to oh. Doha was 14 hour trip. Yeah. Where is Doha? It's in Qatar. Qatar. Qatar, okay. Qatar, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Saudi Arabia. yeah. My goodness. All right, so I would say you're good travelers now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you're experienced at this point. So we hit, we, we flew into Hyderabad yeah. um, and met with at a, like a kind of a conference uh, for church planners there and then spent three days there. Then we flew to Mumbai with our friend, spent time with them, and then flew to, uh, to Kerala with some other friends. So we, we, it was a, we got a tour. <laughs> a tour of India in 12 days. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. It was, it was wild. wild. A lot. So, what did your ministry look like while you were in India? Hmm. I would say that was the biggest shock to me. You know, I've traveled to other countries and done what you consider like Christian missions before. Sure. And it's usually one of two things: either you're preaching your heart out every day at like local churches or teaching, or you're doing service projects, projects helping yeah. out at orphanages or yeah. whatever it is. And, and neither one of those was our primary goal. Right. Our goal really was relationships. So when Mm. we were in Hyderabad, we literally spent three days meeting with and talking with and praying and worshiping with pastors from all over India and Myanmar and Philippines and just all over that that area of the world and trying to get an idea of what God's doing through this network of churches. Mm. I didn't didn't realize that's what we were going to see, but that is what we were going to see. How's God moving in this group of churches? And then we get invited to Mumbai, which is this leader's house in a city of 22 million. Right. And there was no service projects going on. We were in the middle of the craziest buzz of a city and just yeah. trying to connect with the church there. Although you did preach there. Yeah. Yeah, I was able to, yeah. was English-speaking, um, English-speaking church, so I was able to uh, to preach there. And it was, yeah, it was, I, it was awesome. So a great experience. did you have a sermon in the can, or did, did you... you you had one ready to go. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I had I had a couple that I you know I brought my iPad with me, so I sure, yeah. like a couple that I was able like, to piece some stuff together. Yeah, and totally. I mean, how do you? This is this is not like a pre-planned question. No, this fine. is generally me, genuinely me, just wondering, how do you go about planning a sermon to a group of people who you are literally worlds apart mm-hmm. from? Yeah, and find a way to connect and deliver a message that you feel like they need to hear? Uh, a lot of prayer. Yep. Um, I I will say, like, even like even though I had, like, preached that passage before, I strip out a lot of my humor, which is, like, oh, I lean into my humor so much. Sure. Uh, you know, when I'm preaching, like, a new life that um, you just realize, if you start th- processing through, you realize, like, they're not going to catch this. Like, mm. this is not going to translate well. Yep. And uh, one of the worst things to ever translate when you're preaching to, like, another culture is leaning into sarcasm. Oh, yeah. It never yeah. goes well. Yeah. So, and I, I, I don't, I realize that, like, I mean, I, I have that kind of sarcastic humor. So I literally have to just kind of strip back a lot of my, my funny. Yeah. But I'm still myself. So, like, he preached two services. And after the first <laughs> service, this is no joke, three separate people came up to me. And they're like, is he always like that? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, that's just normal Justin, you know, <laughs> right, preaching. And I'm right. like, yeah, why? They thought he was, like, dramatic, putting on a show. I'm like, no, oh, he's not putting on a show. Yeah. That's how yeah. he communicates. Yeah. Like, we loved it. No, it's the theater so, kid in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the they were so Little engaged. Yeah, they were you know, even they were on engaged. the other side of the earth. It was wonderful. That's incredible. Yeah, I, what I find <clears throat> is that in all of my trips, all of our travel, is that people are people are people. Right. Like, no matter what, where they are, no matter what the language they speak, kids are kids, people are people. They deal with the same things that we deal with. Some little things that might be different as far as cultural, but um, we all deal with the same internal issues. Yeah. So, yeah, it all communicates. The gospel preaches yeah. no matter who you're preaching it to. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm sure that this is a loaded question because you it's still so fresh, but is there one particular right away memory that you recall that you are pretty sure you're not going to forget maybe ever? Hmm. Hmm? Oh. Hmm. So when we were in Mumbai, yeah. um, a lot happened. I mean, we're meeting people that, you know, at the conference and in Mumbai that are living through persecution on yeah. different levels. I mean, we met one pastor in Myanmar who took 10 days to get to the conference. The conference ended and the military shut down the border so he can't get home. Yeah, this is the guy who had to literally crawl on his hands and knees across the border. Yeah. yeah. Took 10 days to get there and then had to crawl yeah. to get there. To get to this meeting. Yeah. Well, while we were in Mumbai, um, uh, one of the leaders told a story of a local guy who lives in the slums and, um, you know, that's where he ministers, that's where he works. And um, he's just being himself as a salesman. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to butcher the story and not do it justice, uh-huh. but yeah, he okay. kind of doing his, his thing. And in the middle of doing sales, he... Um, he accidentally hurts a little girl. Just, mm. you know, kids crawl all over you. Right. He's kinda, out in the public. He kind of pushed him off. Yeah, and she, yeah. He stood yeah. up and the little girl fell over. She runs yeah. home, tells her mom. And instead of the mom coming to figure out why his daughter got hurt, she used it as an opportunity to accuse him of actually molesting her daughter. Oh, yeah. And in that country, if you're if that's your accusation, you are guilty until proven innocent. Mm. You go right to jail. Right. Immediately. So, wow. Yeah, so long story short, he, he gets, I think he ended up getting beaten right then mm-hmm. by the crowd. Wow. Yeah. Goes to jail, and they're so backlogged, you only, you, you generally, um, it takes three years to even get a hearing. Oh, my gosh. You don't get to call anybody. You're kind of on your own. And it's a super amazing story, which hopefully we can share somehow. But, like, in the middle of it all, a couple things happened. He, he sat down with us one-on-one and told the story. Yeah. And so you're sitting here. It's like this modern day book of Acts story as totally he, book of Acts story. as he's saying when we were when I was in the prison every prayer I prayed God answered I prayed for someone to be healed God answered, God healed them immediately I prayed for someone to get bail God gave them bail after months and months of no bail like the next day and then on the seventeenth day oh I missed a part which part the old man or the older man so he goes to prison and like in America if you're accused of a sexual crime oh yeah. It doesn't go well for it you. It doesn't yeah, go no, well for you, right, in prison? Yeah. Well, he gets into prison, and this, this man, this, this who he didn't realize was, like, the gang leader of the prison. He was a known, like, yeah, gang. Yeah, he was gang. a known gang leader. Yeah. Tells this guy, who happens to be a worship leader, I guess, to sing for him. He huh. was, yeah, he was singing, and he's like, come, sit over here next to me. Huh. And so he began singing worship songs, and this guy connected with him and basically told the prison, don't touch him. Wow. He's my he's friend. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> And so he would sing for this guy every day, just worship songs. So he Jesus. came under protection. Immediately. The Lord gave uh, him absolute protection. Incredible. Yeah. And then on the seventeenth day, he has this dream where a, car, a white car pulls up, and he ends up going home with them, leaving the prison. Mm. And he's planning on being there for like years. Like nobody gets out of this. There have been guys that have been <laughs> right. in this in the holding cell for years, 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 waiting for a trial. Yeah. So he gets up on the 18th day, dresses, cleans he up, gets, gets ready gets to go. He gets all dressed up. And they're all like, where are you going? Yeah. What, are you, where are you, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going home today. Yeah. They're like, dude, yeah. you're not going home right. today. Nobody goes home. <laughs> yeah. You haven't even like nothing. Yeah. No, it's not happening. All from a dream. Wow. And sure enough, that day, the guard comes and says, someone's posted your bail, which he didn't even know how they knew he was there. Right. He couldn't make a call. Yeah. And he ends up walking out of the prison. Well, so many people saw his prayers answered yeah. that he left with a name of like family members from all these inmates. Would you go tell my family about this God who answers prayers? Oh my gosh. He left with a, like a whole list of all these people. Like, they, they didn't let tell, him leave the tell. jail with it because they confiscated it. But literally, that's how impactful he was with the prisoners. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's literally like Paul and Silas Seriously. singing yeah, yeah. praises <laughs> Seriously. and the shackles falling off and all these prisoners being like, it's, it was like a book of Acts story. We sat with this guy as he, for like a half an hour, we, we recorded it just listening to his story. It was absolutely We actually have part of his song. Oh, Maybe yeah. we'll share it. Yeah, actually, that would as be well. cool. Yeah, yeah. share that. That would be cool. It's just a, a song the Lord it. gave him that he would sing in, in jail to the Lord. Wow. It was really powerful. <laughs> आवाज दू जिस घड़ी फरियाद सुन ले मेरी फरियाद सुन ले मेरी या 
So yeah, we won't forget about that. I can't <laughs> imagine how you would. His name's Jay Esh. Yeah. And we asked him, would you mind if using his name publicly because yeah. that could cause problems for him. And yeah. he said, I'm not afraid of anyone. That's literally what he said. <laughs> yes. Why would he be? Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. He's clearly yes, favored. Why would yeah, that's right. oh, he? That's right. What does he have to be afraid of? So yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was that's, cool. That's incredible. Um, so the only other thing I'm wondering is, was there anything that you learned there, that you heard there, um, that you feel like you can apply here? There's a couple things. One thing that just comes to mind that was um, what I was stunned by, about all the different leaders that were a part of this organization that we were, um, that were visiting and just getting to know, was the importance on relational leadership. Mm. Um, it was it was overwhelming how much um, time spent and interest and uh, invited um, like accountability uh, into into their lives as leaders, um, asking us like for feedback and um, on things that you know how, how do you think it went and how you know what what's your opinion on this the um, the level of of relational. Um, Relational leadership versus positional really, um, leadership. I think I think so many times in in America, churches, um, and just really in America, it's uh, it's such positional leadership. Like, right. all right, you got a pastor and he's in charge, and then this and then yeah, that. It's and the then hierarchy. The whole hierarchy thing. Yeah. And what we just watched was this beautiful, like, flat leadership mm. that was based solely on relationship, invited relationship. Um, which was such a different dynamic, not only for our American minds, right. but like for an Indian mind. Right. Like that's not how things operate in India, mm. and it was countercultural for them, not just countercultural for us as Americans. So it was kind of like a brand new way of looking at the kingdom and leadership in the kingdom that um, honestly I'm still grappling with like I'm it's rolling around in me still there's so. some beauty in the consistency of that because that was put on display when they flew across the world to have <laughs> lunch with you yes <laughs> right yes yeah and then invited us so true. Right. to fly all the way across the world right to spend 12 days with them amazing with no with no end like goal of like oh by the way yeah we want you to like sign up for this or partner us with us in this or donate to this or like there was like you we ended that with just really great friendships that I know have kingdom purpose yeah but there was no ask there was no like end goal apart from we want to join together in partnership in the kingdom yeah it was refreshing yeah <laughs> so refreshing yeah. well I'm, I'm glad that we're doing this because you kind of just summed it up. It's not like we can put together a slideshow of the walls that you built and the houses that you painted yeah. and the service projects that you did. Um, this whole thing was about building relationships yeah. and learning from each other. So I know that this is going to be beneficial for people yeah. to, to actually hear these stories. Yeah. There's a couple things I want to add on to that, yeah. Yeah. which is, um, do you know, the last day we were in Mumbai, one of the leaders... The, the main leader that came here, went to lunch with Justin and invited us, yeah. sat down with Justin and I in, in the flat. We were in our a little flat they let us stay in. Um, and it was just amazing because he's a, he's a leader over hundreds of churches. I mean, he's, a, he's on a team of leaders over hundreds of churches. And I think if I whittle it down correctly, he actually said to Justin and I, you can't really offer us anything. I'm not looking for money. I'm not looking for influence. I'm not looking for anything. Right. I just think God's in this. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm like, that's so yeah. different than you normally, you know, usually there's some sort of ask or like, this is what's in it for me. Yeah. Right. And uh, what's something I want to highlight that was really important to me personally is before I left, a gentleman, Dave, from our men's morning prayer pulled me aside and said, I have a prophetic word uh, for you guys going on the trip. And it was a word about you're going to go and you're going to experience some stuff that you may not be able to have full understanding of, but recognize that God's creating a new paradigm mm. and just put that on the shelf under the title, new paradigm, mm. you know, a new, he used the word wineskin was the word he used yeah. and just, you know, um, trust that he's going to unpack that in the Lord's time. And I told Dave this past Sunday, I said, you know, a lot of times when we get kind of generic words, <laughs> if they don't make sense to me in two or three days, I'm like, chuck them out. I have no, that's great. Thank you for your effort, but I don't care. 
I thought about that word almost every day oh, wow. because it was such that whole relational aspect. Yeah. We talk about it, but it was such a different paradigm, a different wine skin, if you want to call that, that I was just blown away. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it was really quite something. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. <clears throat> well, are you glad to be home? Or do you wish yeah. you were still there? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad. To, I'm glad to be home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I'm get totally that. glad to be home. <laughs> um, well, do you have any other lingering thoughts? Anything that you want people to know about that trip, or do you feel like we have got it? Huh, yeah, good Let things me, happening. A lot of good things happening. You know, we've um, we got to really revitalize some some old relationships over the over those the past thirty years. But you know. I don't. I've never really gotten to spend just concerted days with, uh, with like with Molly, yeah, with the, you know Molly Poffin and um, that whole family, um, and that was rich. And that was an yeah. awesome o- opportunity. We got to speak and and teach at the uh, Dulos Theological Seminary, um, theological college, and um, just pour into that. There's a there's a whole lot of things that are that are happening in. In, in and through that ministry that we've partnered with. And I think the most beautiful thing is that, you know, with Abraham's passing a few years ago, that, um, you know, they have been church, they have been raising up the leaders to plant churches all across India. That's been the heartbeat and the passion. And so when a, when a leader leaves, you think, okay, well, what's it going to look like? And I, and as, as his son starts taking that over, um, and, and carrying that torch, it looks different, but it's the same heartbeat. Like yeah. it's that same apostolic heartbeat <laughs> of raising up leaders and and expansion of the kingdom. And I think it's that that beautiful like way of like as, as we move from generation to generation, the the purposes of God don't change, but sometimes the modes and the methods do. Yeah. And and be being able to see God moving in the midst of it, even though it looks different. And so. Yeah, so Emmanuel's like it's just you know doing all kinds of, of great work and um, and and, that, and their family. Um, so for people that might be newer to like me, I've been here yeah. six years. Um, New Life has partnered with this college for many years. Yeah, I think they use a tr- number like six hundred. Like that, the college has sent out six hundred new leaders to plant yeah. churches all throughout India. Mm. And uh, one of the new things they're actually doing is in the northern part of India. Uh, persecution is really intense yeah. and so rather than train people up there they're bringing leaders from the north to come down for kind of intensives yeah. down in, in their area in the south of India um, to kind of get them out of that for a little bit do some training and send them back home so it's just some really on the ground foundational work that uh, we get to partner with as New Life Church it's awesome yeah yeah <clears throat> Man. well I hope you guys both know I think you do and I think that you could tell that your church family and especially the staff here at New Life was actively praying for you the entire time that you were gone. I mean, we had that sending out the Sunday before you guys went. Mm -hmm. That was also (laughs) very powerful and a beautiful moment. We brought everybody down together to pray over you. And um, it seems to me like God spoke and worked and moved through that whole process every moment that you were gone. So, yeah beautiful thing it was awesome it's great to be a part of not just um a local body of believers but realize that we're a part of a global movement of the gospel of the kingdom right and that expands beyond the center of the universe bitterford maine right it goes to (laughs) yeah it goes to you know we've i traveled to mexico and the dominican republic and then to um and and it's just to see the heartbeat of god and this and and this confirmation after confirmation, um, no matter where we're at, right. of, of what what it is that God's doing in in the earth, and it's uh, it's a powerful thing to be a part of. So, yeah. nice. All right. Well, I think we're good. Um, hopefully, that this was beneficial for all of you as yeah, well. I hope so. And um, yeah, I'm sure if you've got more questions that we didn't get to, come find these guys on Sunday morning and just pepper them with your questions. Yeah. We can give a little bit more like specific answers and yeah, things like right. that. We're trying to be, you know, careful. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. We're good. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.